I'm in the other room now. Yeah, so um, the title of my topic has been announced. Uh, is a knowledge of the self and interrogation of the influence of migration and globalization on individuals in contemporary Nigeria. Now, I begin by saying, if you go to slide two, uh, that migration is not, is an ancient thing uh, from the first time you had the uh, waves of uh, Africans who are the first homo sapiens migrating to other parts of the world. Yeah. Then in Nigeria, uh, we have got people who used to do a seasonal migration in form of occupational migration. Either they wanted to go to areas where you have fertile soil, especially in Suku area, they used to go to Zowani. And then now they go to Odoro for uh, uh, Yam, Koko Yam. And many more people went to Yoruba land uh, to learn herbal medicine. So migration has been there from the one, but the current forms of uh, migration in Nigeria are a totally different thing. Uh, now migration uh, results from mainly an economic factor. Now, but my concern is not really the, 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 the economic factors which are really well known and documented in the literature, but why do people migrate? Which type of people migrate? Now I said this because I had experience in uh, 2003, I was in Dakar for a Kodesaria conference and I met one Igbo boy who had his uh, B BSc in uh, I think microbiology or something like that. Now, but he was selling food in a, some uh, one little hotel, not even well paid, and he was saying that he was waiting for, for time where he could uh, uh, get over to Morocco, and from Morocco he could travel to Spain. We spent a lot of time talking before he agreed that he would get back to Nigeria. Whether he got back, I didn't know, because I didn't. I just stayed there for about three weeks. Now, in uh, earlier before then, I think in 1992 or thereabouts. I met a little girl, but a graduate in the uh, US, and that's in Finland. And she was, she had a degree and she was told to migrate to uh, Finland that uh, he had friends there because there's so many friends here, but the Nigerian Finnish Friendship Association, she used that thing to go to Finland, but she couldn't get a job. And there in the neighborhood where I stayed, you know, she was she used to sell food after cleaning the place and all that, after eating, because they used to eat as a collective. So I talked and talked to her. She said that going back to Nigeria would be a big shame to, to her. Uh, last time she was now saying that it was trying to migrate to the US. So the issue is, why is it that some people migrate? Why do people not migrate when they face the same conditions? I think that is my own, uh, uh, that's the thrust of my paper. And I believe that this answer of this migration, why people uh, get um, uh, uh, involved in migration results largely from their personality formation. And in the same way, those who are exposed to globalization, all the influence of globalization, again, the way people react, uh, dependent on, again, their personality formation. So that not uh, all people who are exposed to the same circumstances of both migration and globalization act in the same way. And then the problem is, why do you have such differences? Is it merely because humans are different? And I think that is part of the answer. But my concern is that the, 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 if you have people who migrates, I think is for me, one of the things that is a low level of tolerance for the existential situation in which they find themselves. And I used an example in Universe of Nigeria, Suka, where we had the Titanic struggle of the nine professors. My then supervisor and mentor and teacher, uh, late Professor Emmanuel Obiechina, you know, refused to run away, let's use the word run away from the University of Nigeria. And because it was my supervisor, I asked him, sir, your neighbors have run away. 
why are you still, <laughs> why are you still back? And said, Damien, if I run away from home to the north, if they pursue me in the north, where would I run to? So this is mm -hmm. the type, the type of you know uh, commitment that you there is a problem, and you are committed to a way of you know finding a solution to that problem. So he said, I will sit here and fight and overcome, and exactly that what he did. So that if you now find such people in any type of circumstance in terms of migration, now they will remain stable. They will not be. Uh, destabilized, they will not be worried, they will not experience uh, some type of fear <clears throat> about surviving in the country or whatever. Now, but you can now contrast it with the other example, a TV commercial, Andrew, you know, who was sent to check away a popular TV commercial in Nigeria those days. He was checking out of Nigeria, no light, no roads, no nothing. Now, but they're, they're, at the same time, there were people in Nigeria who were not trying to check out. So what is it in people that will make them not check out? So that is the key figure. All the things about globalization, uh, migration, whether it's internal, external, whether migration is a cultural, economic, I mean, uh, globalization, cultural, they're all bothered to the same thing that the effect is what I want to, uh, to examine. And if you look at, the self, which is the, the thing, the formation of the self. That is the key thing, how are the individuals formed? And I start from the knowledge of Maroon Wogi, that is know yourself. And this was not the know thyself of uh, Socrates, which he found in the Oracle of Delphi. Now, but this is as old as anything in Igbo. Know yourself, who are you? What are your limits? And it's, it's a very common discourse, even among children. You know, either who is you, who are you, who are your father, who are this, who is this, and all that. So that self-interrogation is was always there. And the essence of it was for the person who was being interrogated to locate himself in a way where he could then have a knowledge of about himself, be sure of himself, be sure of what he's saying, be sure of what he's doing, and again be sure of the way forward in life. So, but that is if you are well formed, but if you are not well formed, that's a big problem. And I'm saying also that in contemporary Nigeria, the problem of self-formation has become very, very difficult because it starts from home. And many parents, you know, have really abandoned, let me put it that way, so maybe it's maybe a, bad, a bad word to use and perhaps it may be an exaggeration. But many parents have abandoned the idea of parenting in the sense, not that they deliberately don't want to do parenting, but the, the, the nature of the economy, that you have a job. Perhaps you live in Lagos, you live in a, very far from one place to the other. Uh, let's say Okokomaiko, for instance, and you have your office in the VI. I mean, you sometimes people left by 4 a.m., and came back around 10 p.m. And many of them didn't know their children. I know a family, a close friend of us, who stopped the wife, say, you have to stop this job so that at least your children will know you if they do not know me. You may say that is a gender, <laughs> gender oppression, but it helped them because then I went and established a very big bookshop for the wife near home, and the wife could from home operate, you no know, take care of the children and all that. But when you now abandon that, is this you can unmute yourself, sir. You can unmute yourself because I had to mute everyone because of that noise. Maybe you can call Prof on the phone. Please, we should not uh, make noise. That's why I omitted all. 
so she can he can unmute himself. I, I, no, the problem is not from okay. here. In the yes. neighborhood, there's somebody. This uh, Sawyer's. They are dealing. They are sawing wood. So is is close to the neighborhood. Just out, a bit outside my my compound. It's all right. It's all right. We can hear you now. Do you understand? We can hear you now. Hello. Do you we understand can the hear reason? You now. Yeah. So it's because of that. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, so I'm now saying that in contemporary uh, period, so the idea of self-formation and let of self is become call it global because people now used to get plural identities. Now you are no longer brought up in a, a close way, and sometimes children live earlier from home. You find uh, seven, ten-year-old children who are brothers, you know, uh, and, and who live sometimes live outside for their secondary school education. They don't have parents, they don't have brothers, they don't have sisters, and they have all manner of companies. So that it now becomes difficult for them to achieve that self mastery, you know, which at childhood. You have to achieve by exposure to parents and exposure to the extended family and exposure to people because the child was the child of all. And now you have different types of influences on children, on society in general. You have four-one-eyed people, you have colored people, you have innocent people, you have thieves, you have fraudsters, you have Yahoo Yahoo people, and it's difficult for people to separate themselves from this because it appears that the the crowd the noise made by the small, by the few, who are not where they seem, seem to consume those who are on their own. So, but for one to uh, be well formed personally, it needs patience, it needs tolerance, it needs personal stability of the self, you know, it needs self-control, and it needs knowledge, total knowledge of the environment in which you operate. So that that knowledge of the environment where you operate is the environment that can give you insight into how you can tackle problems that confront you. So this is where the, the issue of knowledge of the self is very, very, uh, very, very critical. Uh, I gave some definitions of those who defined uh, that and all that, but I think this is enough explanation. Now, in how knowledge of the self is important because it tells you what to choose and what not to choose. It tells you what to do and what not to do. Now, if we, I, I, let's take uh, globalization, let's take uh, my university, uh, which is something that was part of my uh, validity lecture. And is part of virtually everything the entire university system is globalization. Now, this ranking of the universities, again, the thing is coming from uh, the global north, just the, like the global north is the destination of migrants, and the, the global north is the center from which globalization flows down. And when they impose this their ranking of universities, and they have used measures that are outlined and designed in their own environment. And then they impose it, now impose it on people. Now people can resist, but the level of resistance is dependent on the university where you find yourself. If you find a university that says, go away with university ranking, go away with impact factor, go away with your, you know, all these things, you don't have a problem. But when you do, when you don't have that, now the, the, the globalization effect on you will be, it will dent your personality in the sense that when you are writing, you are not writing what you really want to write. You are writing what you want to write so that if it's published in the places they want them published, then you can get promoted. Now, and you can find is dampening the spirit, the creative spirit of many intellectuals. You know, but some people manage, it's okay, I, I write what they want there to get promotion, then I write what I want that I think will give me, create my identity for myself. So now if you take migration again, if I go back, I go, go back and forth. Now you have narratives, good narratives, everything is there. Every, and people, you don't have the knowledge of the place. 
Now it, you 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 see dollars. Now you don't know the you don't know the housing cost, so the energy cost. You don't know the food cost, and when you get there, you find that, that many people never that come back. Let many me know when you want me to go to the top slide. Never come back. Because Hello? I have not really this slide. You let me know when you want the third one, the fourth one, then I'll let you have them. No, I'm more, I, I feel of slide there. Okay, I'm not following the slide. I'm not, I'm not a okay. You, go, go to the other slide. I'm not a slide person. Normally, that's why I'm just I'm going. I've left the slide already. I'm. No need to say, okay, go to the, is it the fourth or fifth slide? Okay. Uh, we have talked about migration. Hello. Okay, so globalization We have talked now. about migration. So long talked, globalization. Yeah, even I said that the factors on globalization, I've mentioned them, you know, people know this. Okay. This so, as I, my I want this. You are seeing my screen. It's not on these definitions. Which are common and out there. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this year, yeah, this is better. This is better. I, I still can't. Right, no, no, go back. Yes, okay. leave it. This is the area I am. This is the area Globalization. I am. Globalization. And I'm here because, no, globalization, migration, and individuals. Next, next one. This one. The, the center of the centerpiece of my presentation that people know much about migration. People know much about globalization, but people have not explored why individuals are affected in different ways by both migration and globalization. And this is what the central piece of my paper is. And the first point there is that migration and globalization affect individuals, both positively and negatively. Now, but who are those that will be affected positively, who are those that will be affected negatively? That information, your orientation, socialization into the existing realities in your own environment, you know, we, you, you have a ways of you know contending with them without migration you say okay i will stay here that's why i give the example of subjection this thing that is happening uh, right now in terms of internet connectivity is a good example of what we are talking about and in terms of individuals multiplying options organizations multiplying options because part of the people many people who want to migrate uh, scholars they say oh zoom dot doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Now, but this should, must Zoom always be used. Are they not authentic to Zoom for those of us who are, who cannot, who do not have great uh, connectivity? Now, some people who are intolerant, who may not absorb the risk of physical uh, traveling and all that, to say, oh, there's no room for Zoom, so let me leave this country and go to another place. But some of that will stay. Now, some people say, okay, part of uh, the globalization, uh, internet work is available everywhere. If I go there, I don't need to, you know, continue checking this, changing network, doing this and all that. But some people say, okay, this is uh, my country. I will take it back. The point I'm trying to make is that the nature of the individual who migrates, the nature of the nature of the most African globalization, either. Positive or positive, we depend on this information. My thesis is that when individuals are richly endowed, when individuals with skill you know, to survive in any country, and the value, the assets of integrity and protection, I will survive in Nigeria and achieve what I want to do. In life. Now, now but when the personalized information is, is not is not sided or anything, the person does not have self mastery, self control. The person does not know himself, the one or the other. The other. Now, now the, the, the person, person is uh, most likely to not know himself, himself the one or the other. Because the person who is not sided, 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 the person who is not
ways through which contemporary parents in a day must ensure that the children receive very solid cultural and the child to reform in such a way that the recipients of education in Nigeria are not alienated from their cultural roots by the type of education mm -hmm. very much for the presentation. Okay. The floor is now, or the Zoom space is now open for those of us who may want to uh, ask one or two things from what uh, our prof has shared with us. I can see somebody's hand up, uh, but uh, before the uh, call that testing, uh, I want to say, um, I agree with you absolutely that formation, formation of our youth may reduce migration. But however, there is one point you have also realized and mentioned yourself when you were talking about solution. The very last part, you have said formation, you have said educational system to be reformed, and you have talked about uh, designing the educational system to have a skill acquisition and all that. And I said that borders on entrepreneurship. And uh, most universities are putting that in, particularly our own university, the National Open University of Nigeria, is doing a lot of work on this uh, skill acquisition for our students, for the public. We have courses and all that, especially we have short courses that want to even come up now so that people can learn more things. But I, I want to also say that apart from formation, I think that they say a, a, a man that is hungry is angry. A, a hungry man is an angry man. And so when people are hungry, Definitely, they will want to go to look for food where they can feed themselves. I don't absolutely ag agree that it's because they lack formation. But in the United was they lack food. And when somebody is hungry, you don't get the person, sorry, sorry, to be well. You have to provide food for such an individual before you will not hear any consolation you want to bring. So that is the situation I think is happening to our youth in this country. If they have really gone to school, they have finished school, and they have nothing to uh, rely on. And this school is still acquisition, I say, some of them even need money to get this acquisition. Apart from the money that they used to get trained in the universities or tertiary institutions, apart from that money that some of them are even paying back because our parents even take loans to train their children. And so they come out and six months they are told, still depending on what these parents can still give them to eat. They get frustrated. It's not absolutely lack of formation, but the system has to be addressed critically. Yes, so I think some of them going may be justifiable, not because of formation. Though there are some that even when the parents are rich and they have the, everything, they still want to go, they, they can survive. Those groups lacking formation, they are a group. Those not lacking formation are a group. So please, sir, now having said that, let me call others to contribute after which we take all holistically. Please, sir, can you please, are you telling me, sir? When we finish our comments and questions, when we finish our comments and questions, then you will answer all. So please, uh, I have finished now. I will call from other persons to put their own contributions and comments. You note all that, and then you answer everything at once so as to save time. So I don't know whether that's Professor. Matthias Tuku, that has his electronic hands off. So kindly make your contribution, sir, or ask. You kept talking about the, the challenge of migration with respect to the individual self. And I kept thinking about the concept of Onwege. Now, I am just wondering, 
who defines Omwege? If what needs to be known to be able to navigate the, the complex challenge of migration is Omwege. Who defines it? Is it the, is it the, the person who is asking Maro Omwege? Or is it the gay that needs to know the Omwe, Omweya? How do, we, how do we navigate these issues? In the context of Obiechina, for instance, that you give us a, as an example. Now, he knows himself. He knew what he wanted, and that's what he pursued. Others also, also knew something that perhaps they knew uh, they supposedly uh, meant to be themselves and their understanding of what they are, their own essence, and they, they pursued it. How do we how do we navigate this complex issue of identity and understanding of the self within the context of your presentation? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is uh, Professor Kelechi Ugwani. Can we hear from you, sir? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm not a professor yet. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Thank you, Professor, for uh, that wonderful uh, uh, presentation and uh, some kind of theorizations in relation to the concept, Igbo concept, Maru uh, I would have started from my own, uh, what I wanted to say, but I think, let me uh, re uh, make some comments on what uh, Matthias Chuku just asked. The concept of Umwegi, uh, in my understanding and from the way uh, Prof has tried uh, putting this out here, is not about your individual self. It's not about uh, your personal interest. I think it, ha it, has, it has a lot to do with rootedness. It has a lot to do with value system. It has a lot to do with where you are coming from. It has a lot to do with your biographies and when you say when we talk about your biographies we're not talking about you as a self but we're talking about you and your rootedness now uh, that takes me to what i wanted to talk about uh, yes what prof uh, presented to us here uh, has a multi-dimensional uh, 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 explanation first you we we can't uh, maru wine. We can't. You, you can't know yourself without really having a particular value system that raised you, and that is what we are lacking at the moment. Many people do not have uh, home training. Neither do they have community training like we used to have in our in in, in African society or, let's say, in Nigerian communities. Now people, uh, rural urban migration, people move to cities, people move to places where they are disconnected from that their rootedness, which will give them the sense of knowing themselves, knowing yourself. And uh, to me, I think that is where I said it's multidimensional. So uh, we, we, we've, 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 if we must look at migration and how it affects uh, uh, knowing yourself, we have to also look at the way people have been raised, the way people have been disconnected from their rootedness and the ways people have uh, distanced from that community that gives them a value that will make them to have commitment to homeland. And this is my view on this for now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution. Prof, I hope you heard the two... Uh, yes, I Okay, so we want you to respond now because I can't see fresh hands up. Because uh, I think so, we are three, we have got three contributors, myself and two others. So, can we hear from you, sir? Did you hear Dr. Matthias and uh, Dr. Kelechi? I hope you heard from Did you hear his response? They are yeah, not very no, no, we didn't hear from I hear You didn't hear from Did you hear his response? If he has responded, I didn't hear that. I thought you were waiting for connect. Hey. Yeah. I was okay. 
I said that Casey introduced a word that I, I didn't use, but I had in mind. The, that is the issue of cultural rootedness. And I said that this phenomenon alone can solve a lot of problems for people. And referring to the issue of hunger and poverty, not all poor people go to steal. Not all hungry people go to steal. You know, not all, all things, every person goes to criminality in spite of hardship. So that's what I mean by knowledge is mastery of the self based on where you are coming from. That I come from a place where certain things are normative. Do this, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. Which is why I was talking, talking on parenting, which we have lost. So thank, thank you very much, bro. I agree that uh, not every hungry person will steal, but you know that we need to eat life and so together. For those who need that permission and those who decide that they will come back home, even if they make small money to come and establish something in their home, they, those people, they need one that we can say no permission per se, if we can use that word for them immediately. But however, but I however, say, if you have no you have no money and, and you get a chance, you, get a chance you can make, and make legitimate money without stealing. It, it is not absolutely correct to say the person lacks permission. I think it's it not too fair or it's too strong to use that, that word for everyone. everyone I, my grade. I don't think so. That is my, is my own, own take. I, I get to disagree with that. I, that. Yeah, I, I, I want to be fair a bit on them. I said, I said, I don't blame the people. If you read my in the paper, I said they are not to be blamed okay. because the society. I said it in the paper. They are not to be blamed. Okay. As I said, I'm, I'm not saying they are now become criminals, but I'm saying <laughs> that the, the way people are formed determines their response. Okay. And there's not only one response. We are talking of responses that could be negative. Okay. And it's such negative responses that is where I'm referring to. I mean, the people migrated with, and uh, made, I, I gave an example of Chimamanda and so many others, okay. you know. Uh, but this, I'm just saying, what is it? I say that those who are richly endowed, you know, they can migrate and, you know, achieve global visibility when they cannot be contained in a country. Mm -hmm. I'm not just condemning any person my grace or any person who does not have the just to all the globalizing values. Okay. Thank, thank you so, you so much. It's been an exciting Okay, thank you so much. I would really appreciate your time and your share of knowledge. We are particularly grateful to you. It's nice, nice to have had you here and we thank all those who have, who have contributed to this discussion. Despite uh, all of us, we have been able to achieve something. And we gave one or two things from this uh, 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 Thank, Thank you so, so much, much sir. We appreciate you. So, so from all of us at TNBS, we want, we want to, to say a Next time, time. Yeah. Yes. Please, Gloria, next time. Yes. You know, here at TNBS, we have a Zoom center. Okay. Zoom center. Okay. Okay. We are, if there, because of lack of uh, internet connectivity, is always there. So that the, if there's a Zoom conference, the people are going to give the paper. We go to the Zoom center mm -hmm. where there's this Zoom control. Okay. You know, and they, they are they are held well, they are aid well, and everything goes fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's one way. But the other one is to set up a, a good Zoom mechanism. There's so many ways of setting them up. I don't know. But, but, but why didn't you go to, go to that center, center to log on to this place? Okay. But I'm not allowed. allowed. No, it's not, you don't just go because you, it's a, if there's a, a, a programming, you go there. They oh, prepare okay. for Maybe it. Maybe such an arrangement would have been made by you earlier. Something like that. But we don't have control over the center. And I'm just saying, in case people don't have it, that's what I'm saying. We don't have it. We'll be using it. Sometimes, sometimes we're working for everybody. But you know, you can't do it. Abuja, is, Abuja has network every time now. It's not unlike this. Uh, on, on globalize or soccer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we are very grateful. Thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, yeah, comments comments are are noted. Noted. So, so 